HR is one who really can treat patients. Because when people get so famous, they always talk about statistic shit, the, the table, not the shit. Because they want to have evidence base. But my image of Dr. Power, he always show a lot of case and show you why you want to treat it and get a very good result and explain <coughs> why he can get a result. If he cannot get a perfect result, he will tell you what, what's wrong with that case. And that is exact the core value I had during the past 20 years. I always want to see people to present the case. So, not long ago, actually it's July 4th, I believe, July 5th. We were in UCLA in Hawaii, and Dr. Pa asked me, why not we organize a crowd organization called Imprint and also, so we can set up a stage, so people can have the stage and present their case. And I immediately realized that is a good idea. Because we are Asia. Asia did not have the stage. Usually the Americans have the stage. If they invite you, you are lucky. If they don't invite you, you have no chance to go to the big stage. So with that idea, we decide we want to have an international association for orthodontic and imprintology. And I truly believe, with your support, not long from today, we can set up the biggest stage on Earth. So today, I would like to take this chance to welcome you, and I wanted to give you a little bit of idea if I want to present a case. How would I present this case? So my topic today is demo for the I International Association of Orthodontics and Implantology case report. So, suppose. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So, one of my colleagues asked me, so why you use the association instead of academy? Academy? International Academy? International Association. What's the difference? If you want a can, we can change it to a can. <laughs> <laughs> We all we all the gym. We don't care. <laughs> okay. So next issue, we change to a cat. So anything you want to do, I can do it for you. You want to talk. So suppose I want to present a case. First, I will show the pre-treatment data. Of course, we need to show the pre pre-treatment data. And after that, based on this pre-treatment data, we come up with diagnosis and treatment plan. And after that, we show the post-treatment data. The number four step, we need to evaluate your, your result, whether it's a good result or poor result. And if you make something if you make some mistake, you have to tell the audience why you make that mistake. And you want to let the audience perfect understand next time we don't make the same mistake. That is what a teacher is all about. You want to avoid your student to make the mistake you made before. And also, at the end of your presentation, you always want to summarize the treatment tip, some tip that can learn. So during this one year's lecture, they can learn something from you. Not just to see your perfect result. Because if you just show the perfect result, they will feel, oh, you are great. And I'm very bad, because yeah. I cannot produce that kind of result. So let me give you an example. Suppose I have a case like this. So this is pre-treatment data. I need to show the pre-treatment data. And what's the significance for this case? 
he has about 11 millimeter discrepancy in his anterior close mark. So the molar is supposed to move back about 11 millimeter. Wow, that's huge. So he was told that only surgery can solve his problem. But he is Malaysia, study in this city. His family and this young guy did not like any surgery. So he would love to have conservative treatment. Also, don't be on. So, how would you approach this case? If you look at the face, he has a very good profile. And if patient have a good profile, why you wanted to have a surgery? That's the first question I had. So, later on, when we look at the data, this young man had already 20 years old. So. Most likely, he was mature. The mandible no longer grows. So that's the end point for this case. So it would be very difficult to fix a person have 11 millimeter discrepancy. So the first step, we get the pretreatment data. We want to analysis this data and come up with treatment plan. That's our first step. So, for the minus seven millimeter negative overjet, wow, that is very difficult to push the door dentition backward. Just use orthodontic without surgery. So, how would you solve this huge gap, the anterior negative crossbar? How to measure the difficulty level? Is that really difficult? What well, it looks like. But we need to have an objective method to measure how difficult this case is. So in that part, in the United States, they set up a discrepancy index to try to measure how difficult that case is. This is for orthodontics. And for the implantology, how difficult <coughs> that case is, I think it is your responsibility, Dr. Park, to set up a system to evaluate how difficult that case is, pre-treatment. So in this case, he has a negative overjet. So this guy got 34 points. And also has an anterior close by and lingual posterior cross by. So summarize the data. This guy get 71. 71 is very difficult. Usually if you have a case over 20 point, that is considered a difficult case. 30, 30 point, very difficult. This guy is 71. Very, very difficult case to treat. So, after we analysis the pretreatment data, we will come up with a diagnosis, a simple diagnosis. Class 3 open by with minus 7 millimeter over J, but very good profile. Since he has a very good profile, we're not going to send this guy to operation room. So, <coughs> we will try to do a conservative orthodontic treatment only. And that brings us to the treatment plan. Every case, almost every case, you probably will come up with plan A, plan B, plan C, and based on the willing of the patient and the situation, you will pick up one of them. Suppose, let's assume in this case, we pick up plan C. So let me show you my plan one will be well, maybe you need to send to oral surgeon to have oral surgery, but the patient refused. Plan B, maybe we would take up number five on the upper, number four on the lower. So it will be easy to retract the anterior to correct the negative of a jet. The patient refused. Number three, 
we only take up this whole uh, horizontal impact framework. Okay, so maybe I can think about it. So finally, we set up this plan C that is considered minimally invasive approach. So we decide we, we want to use also only. So 20 months later in treatment, then we present the post-treatment data. So for the post-treatment data, I show you the pre-treatment and post-treatment. So in every view, you will see, wow, this minus seven millimeter, and we call that Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, is that correct? To have seven millimeter negative bone jet. That is very difficult from orthodontic perspective without surgery. And you also show the front teeth. We close the anterior open bar. Open bar is difficult. We all know that. And we stop this 11 millimeter class three discrepancy. And finally, you show the occlusal alignment and also show the impact, uh, so show the panel. From this panel, you probably realize that you hit back the mold. So you need to point out your deficiency for this case, because that is your weak point. If you didn't show your weak point, the audio will pick up that weak point. And I will go back to this area later on. Finally, you probably will see this beautiful change in class three treatment. So that is the result. But we just showed the post-treatment data. We didn't really evaluate your result. Is this result reasonable, good enough to present in the association or so-called academy? So how do you evaluate your result? In the United States, the American Association of Orthodontics have two ways. One way to evaluate, we call cast radiograph evaluation. It's using the cast, the dental case, and the x-ray to evaluate your result. But in our association, because we have imprint, so we add the other pin and why aesthetic. Because today, people are always concerned about the aesthetic. So they want to see a beautiful tooth and beautiful teeth and beautiful pin aesthetic. So we use the CRE 